Today we will be investigating a serious crime. Someone had taken a bite out of Cookie while she was sleeping. We had gathered the DNA evidence from the crime scene as well as taken a single DNA sample from the victim and the four suspects. Everyone involved is a diploid organism. The evidence is amplified by two different VNTR loci. Looking at evidence at locus A, we can see that the two alleles are here and here. The suspect must match exactly to both of these bands for them not to be excluded from leaving the evidence. If we look across the entire gel, we can see that only two other suspects match exactly. Therefore, the victim, suspect 1, and suspect 2 are excluded from leaving the evidence. This is because neither of these three individuals' alleles match exactly with the alleles present in the evidence. It does not matter, for example, that one of the victim's alleles and one of suspect two's alleles matches with one of the alleles present in the evidence because both alleles must match exactly, not just one. Now, when we look at locus B, we already know that we should not be concerned about the victim, suspect one, or suspect two from looking at the previous locus. Therefore, even though suspect one matches exactly with the evidence, it does not matter because we already ruled that individual out previously. We are only concerned with suspect 3 and 4 because these individuals have not been excluded at locus A. Comparing the bands of these two individuals to the evidence, we see that only suspect 4 matches exactly with the evidence. Because suspect 4's bands match exactly with the evidence at both loci, we cannot exclude this individual from leaving the piece of evidence at the crime scene. This idea of making sure that all alleles of an individual match exactly to the evidence at each loci is similar to piano chords. The entire piano represents a chromosome of a particular individual. If I play one chord on the piano, the chord represents all the alleles at one loci. Each note in the chord represents an allele. If I change a single note in this chord, so let's say I play E flat instead of E, even if the other two notes stay the same, the entire chord has a different name. In this case, we would go from C major to C minor. So each chord has specific notes that it's composed of, and if even a single note is different, the entire chord is different. Much like how if even a single allele of an individual at a given locus does not match the evidence, the particular individual must be excluded from leaving the piece of evidence. When an individual has two bands, this means that this individual inherited an allele from each parent. This DNA fingerprinting analysis is consistent with the fact that suspect 2 is the mother of suspect 4 because at each locus, one of suspect 4's bands matches exactly with suspect 2. The other band of suspect 4 that does not match with suspect 2 came from suspect 4's father. The reason I know suspect 2 is particularly suspect 4's mother and not father is because suspect 2 is female. So this was locus A. Now let's look at locus B. At locus B, again we see that one of suspect 4's alleles matches exactly with one of suspect 2's alleles. Again, this indicates that suspect 2 is the biological parent of suspect 4.